Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Aganan here with a video tutorial in Adobe After Effects CS5 on how to make an Energy Blast special effect for your video. Okay, so before we start doing this tutorial, there is one thing that you're going to have to do, and that is download a plugin for Adobe After Effects called Trapcode Suite. So what you need to do is open up your web browser and go to www.trapcode.com. Once you get to their main website, go to Products, click on Trapcode Suite, and on the Trapcode Suite page, at the very bottom, there is a text saying trial versions available for download. Go ahead and click the download link. And it will basically give you options to download uh, trial versions of their plugins. Now, I would strongly suggest uh, purchasing these plugins for yourself so you get the full version. As you've seen in my example video, there's a huge red X. Uh, on the actual uh, video itself. Uh, this is uh, a result of using the trial version of the special effect. Now I will admit that it is kind of pricey to buy uh, these special effects, but if you're going to take Adobe After Effects seriously, then it's something to consider. Uh, please don't ask me where you can download these special effects uh, for free. I do not know. Uh, so go ahead and scroll down to Trap Code Suite. Uh, select the download for your operating system, so in my case, download for Windows. And make sure it is Trapcode Suite because the special effect that you want to be using is Trapcode Shine 1.6. So download it, follow the install instructions, and make sure it's installed on your Adobe After Effects. You can check by going to the Effects drop-down menu and seeing if Trapcode is there in your drop-down menu. If it is, then you've installed it correctly and you can continue on with the tutorial for the Energy Blast. This video tutorial is based off the video tutorial that I watched on YouTube called After Effects Tutorial Kamehameha, which was made by a YouTube user called Demonstration. Now, it's a really good tutorial, has very clear instructions, but the problem is that when you actually watch the tutorial, it's only in 240p. So you can't actually see the details of what's going on on the Adobe After Effects interface. So I felt that since this uh, tutorial really motivated me to get involved with Adobe After Effects a lot more, that I would make a tutorial for you guys in 720 or 1080p. And that way you guys could follow along with my instructions, which are based off these this guy's instructions, but also see what's going on in the actual Adobe After Effects interface. Okay, so back in the Adobe After Effects interface, you want to go over to the project window over here, right click, go to import and file. Uh, select the video that you want to edit, so in this case my video is named NRG Blast. Go ahead and open that video. That imports it into the project window. Then you want to click on that video and drag it down to New Composition, which is this composition button down here. Release. And basically what that does is it creates a new composition to the exact resolution of the video that you want to edit. So in this case my video is 1920 by 1080. So this video hasn't been pre-edited yet to the length that I want it to be. So this is straight from my video camera. So if we go down here to the composition window, you can see the time ruler. And this is the current time indicator, the red line here, the yellow mark at the top. So if we just scrub through this video, you can see that I enter the shot at about just before four seconds. I come in and I go into a fighting pose just after six seconds here. So that's where I want my, my video to start. So if I go to the work area start, which is this yellow marker here, click and drag to the time indicator, and then scrub through the video some more. So I do the gesture for the energy blast, hold it there, come out of it, and I sort of walk towards the camera here at about 12 seconds. So if I just go back a little bit just before 12, eh, it's not too important for this tutorial, just say here. And then I go to the other work area end marker, which is also yellow, drag that down to the time indicator, right click on the gray bar, uh, go to trim comp to work area. So now from having a video which was over 12 seconds, I've gone to a video which is only just over 5 seconds in length. So that would be a lot easier for you guys to, when you do the special effect and you go to uh, render the special effect, it'll render a lot quicker because you have less video to work with. So now if I go to the very start of this video, you can see I'm in the fighting pose, scrub through, do the uh, gesture, come out of the gesture, and I end there. Okay, so that's a great sort of length that you want to work with in Adobe After Effects. 
Okay, so now that we have the uh, composition to the duration that we want to uh, edit with, let's go ahead and create a new solid. So first go down to your composition window here and click on your video. Make sure it's selected. You'll know it's selected with the dots that appear around the composition uh, frame here. Go up to Layer, New, Solid, and we want to create a new white solid. Now the width is defaulted to the size of your uh, video, which is 1920 by 1080. Now for this tutorial, we want to make the width a lot larger than the actual uh, composition, the actual video. So if we go to click here, and we can change this. So we want quite a bit of space to play with. So I would uh, recommend going to about 500 to 600 pixels more than the actual width of your video. So in this case, I'm going to put it in as 2,500. And you also want to make sure that the solid color is white. So go ahead and go to the very top left there. Make sure it's white and hit OK. Hit OK here to create the solid. And now we have a new white solid, which is a lot wider than our actual composition. And you can, you can see that from the uh, wet box indicator here. So the white solid actually goes past uh, the borders of the video composition. OK, so with this white solid name, let's go ahead and rename it. So let's go down to the composition window, right click on the solid, go to rename, and let's rename this Blast. OK, so the next thing we want to do is we want to turn this solid into a circle. Now to do this, we go up to the rectangle tool here, click and hold, and it will bring up a drop-down window with all these different uh, tools that we could select. We're only interested today in the Eclipse tool, so go ahead and click on that. Hold down Shift and drag. And basically what this will do is it will scale a perfect circle for you. So for this case, uh, let's just go ahead and make it this size for the time being. So release shift, release the mouse button, and you have a perfect circle. Okay, so once we've changed our white solid into a circle, let's go ahead and click on the selection tool back up here, which is the mouse cursor looking button. Click on that. So now we have the mouse cursor back. Then go down to your composition window. Make sure that we have uh, the blast layer selected and then go down to transform and click on the little uh, arrow which will bring down the transform properties and here we have anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. In this tutorial we'll be making keyframes for position, scale and opacity so don't worry too much about rotation and anchor point. Okay so let's go back up to the composition window here uh, make sure that we have the blast circle selected and basically we want to move this out of the way so we can see the character. So now that we can see the character, let's go ahead and scrub through the video to the point where we want the circle to first appear. So this will be where we are charging the energy to create the energy blast. So I move my hands uh, to my lower hip here and probably around there is where we want the circle to first appear. Now as you can see the uh, size of the video or the composition window is still quite small you can go down here uh, and click fit and that will basically make the composition a lot bigger so we can see in greater detail what's going on. Um, there's various ways that we can resize the circle and move the circle about but as the circle gets smaller it's difficult to actually move the circle in the composition. I'll give you an example here so if we go ahead down to the transform properties go to scale and let's like change the circle to very small size. So about that would probably be about the size that we want it to uh, first appear in the video. But now when I click on this circle and try to drag it over to my hands, you can see that I've not actually clicked the circle, I've clicked a property of the circle and it's now changing the shape, which is uh, pretty annoying. So let's go ahead and undo that by going up to edit, undo. <clears throat> Uh, let's go ahead and make the circle a lot bigger so we can move it around first. So let's go and move it in front of my hands here. And then let's scale it down to the size that we want. So about there. And now we can actually change the position of the circle by going to the position properties, hovering the cursor over the position properties, and by clicking and dragging left and right, you can see here we're moving on the x-axis if I go ahead and click on the other property, drag left and right, we are now moving the circle on the y-axis. 
So for uh, just greater ease of moving the circle around without actually changing the size or the shape of the circle, I would recommend uh, moving the circle in this manner. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom even more in this area. So in this case, I put, I put my mouse over the area that I want to zoom in, and I just basically uh, roll the mouse wheel forward. If you don't have a mouse wheel, then what you should do is you should go ahead and scale up the video in this uh, resolution uh, here, resolution drop uh, window here, or you can also click on the zoom tool and you can click on the hand tool up here and basically that will allow you to move the composition without actually moving the video in the composition window. So if we scale back out and I had the selection tool selected and I started moving stuff around you can see I'm moving the video but not the composition window and we don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and undo that go back to the hand tool and let's move this around and let's zoom in on this area here. Okay, so let's make sure we have the blast circle selected and I think that's pretty much where we want it to start. So let's go ahead and enter some keyframes. So now that we have the circle in the position where we first want it to appear in the video, let's go ahead and click on the stopwatch icons next to position, scale, and opacity. Now let's scrub back a little bit to where we wouldn't want the circle to appear. So let's say about there. And let's go ahead and move that circle over to where my hands are. So you can see that already we're creating an animation here. This line indicates sort of like an animation path. And let's go ahead and scale down the circle to make it even smaller. So let's say about there. And let's go ahead and turn the opacity down to zero. So what we've done here is because we're changing properties, new keyframes are being created in the composition uh, sort of time uh, line here. Okay, next thing you want to do is you want to go one frame forward in your timeline down here. So let's move the current time indicator one frame forward. And as you can see, there are no keyframes in this frame. Now with scale selected, you want to do is create a new keyframe. So go ahead and click on the add keyframe icon which is this diamond here. Let's go ahead and click that. So now we have a new keyframe for scale. Now let's scrub the video forward to the point where we want the actual uh, circle to get bigger, so where we unleash the power of this energy blast. So I would say around about there for me. Okay, so I would normally just drag, uh, click and drag the circle to where my hands are, but I don't want to risk changing the uh, actual su uh, actual shape of the circle from a perfect circle to something strange like that. So go ahead and undo that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reposition the circle using the position properties in the transform down here. So let's go ahead and drag the circle forward a bit. Just drag it up a bit on the y-axis. And remember that this is where the circle is getting bigger, where you're unleashing the power of the energy blast. So let's go ahead and make it quite big. So let's say, mm, let's say around about that size. So now let's reposition the circle again. What do you think? Is that a, is that a good enough size? Let's go ahead and make that just a little bit bigger. Yeah, let's make it that size. All right, so there we ha have quite a nice big energy blast size coming out of the hands here. Okay, so now that we have the circle to the size we want it to be when uh, we actually unleash the power of the energy blast, let's go ahead and scrub through the video. So as you can see from our first uh, keyframe, which we added previously to scale, from there onwards, you can see that the circle becomes bigger, but it leaves the hands way too quickly. So what we want to do is we want to reposition the circle so it stays with the hands right until we get to this point here. So let's go back to the first frame and let's zoom in. So as you can see the circle is it's not over the hands but I'm happy with where it is. So here let's reposition the circle 
so it's there. Let's reposition again, so it's here. I mean, ideally, you want to have the circle covering your hand. So I'm just going to go for each frame and change this out. As you can see, the circle is getting bigger and bigger. And it'll get to the point where it doesn't really matter anymore. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I will keep repositioning the circle so the hands stay covered. So there you can see the circle is so big. The hands are covered. They're covered there. Let's move it a little bit forward now to about here. Uh, even more forward to about there. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's put it there. And let's reposition that to here. And there we have it, our final uh, frame there where we had the size originally. So now if we go straight through that again, go back, I'm charging up the power. I'm going forward now, circle is getting spontaneously bigger, going forward in front of my hands, and there. Okay, so just for the sake of the tutorial, that will be good enough for the time being. Okay, so if you've made it this far in the tutorial, congratulations, you're doing really well. But now things are going to get a little bit more complex, a little bit more difficult, but stay with me because it's going to be worth it. So now let's go to our blast and make sure it's selected and hit Control D on the keyboard. And this will make a duplicate of your blast effect. And as you can see, it's been created here as blast number two. Now let's go and hide this by clicking on the eye icon. So now this is hidden from your composition window up here. And now select blast, which is your original blast. So make sure that's selected now. Okay, so with the original blast selected, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify the shape of the circle so that we have the beam coming out. But before we start doing this, I'm going to go back in the timeline just a few frames to where my arms almost fully extend out, so about here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start animation for the mask path shape. So let's go ahead and create a new keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch icon here. So what this does is, it, is that it, it ensures that we have a perfect circle right up to this point where we just created a new keyframe. Now let's go one frame forward and start uh, manipulating the shape of this circle so that we have the beam coming out. And in order to do this, we're going to create three new points using the pen tool. So go ahead and click on the pen tool up here. And you won't be able to see it on the screen capture software that I'm using, but when you put the cursor over the outline of the circle, a little plus icon will appear on the pen tool cursor. So making sure that that plus sign is showing we can create new points. So to go ahead and create one point up here, and directly below that, at the bottom of the circle, with the plus line showing, let's go ahead and create another point. And at the very far right of the circle, just below or above the far right point, let's go ahead and create one final point. So there we have three new points that we just created. Now go back over here to the selection tool, and what we're going to do now is we're going to select these two points. So let's go ahead and just drag over here and select those points. And now I'm going to click on those points and just drag them out off the screen. So there we have the beam coming out from the circle. Okay, so what we want to do next is you want to start modifying the shape of this beam to your liking. So just go ahead and start tinkering around the, the different points of the beam itself. Um, it's entirely up to you how you want the beam to look. Um, I mean, if you're just messing around and getting used to uh, Adobe After Effects, then I guess it's not too important, but it's good to uh, get in the habit of being a little bit of a perfectionist, especially when it comes to special effects, because you, you want to do your best to try and sell the effect to the audience. Um, but for this case, since it is just a tutorial, I'm ha quite happy with uh, that shape there. Uh, let's just go ahead and quickly change this one. I say I'm happy, but I'm not really happy at all. Uh, you know what? That'll do. Okay, so that's going to be the final shape of the beam coming out of the energy ball. But now what we have here is we have the first keyframe, which where it's just a circle, and then the next keyframe is the beam itself coming out. So what we want to do is you want to click on the second keyframe and just drag that out to, I would say, maybe uh, shall we say 10 frames, 7 to 10 frames, 
Um, let's just go ahead and zoom in on the uh, timeline here so we can actually see the counter for the individual frames. So there we go, we have each frame showing up now. And let's go ahead and drag this out to... Let's go to about 10 frames forward. So now, the beam expands out of the energy ball. And we'll stop at 16 frames, but that doesn't matter because it's already off screen. So it looks like it's just continuing off into the distance here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So, so once you're happy with the shape of the beam coming out of the energy ball, it's time to add some color. Now at the very beginning of the tutorial video, I asked you to download a Adobe After Effects plugin called Trap Code Suite. So if you haven't done that already, then please do that now because we need it. Okay, so making sure that we have Blast selected, let's go ahead to Effect, go down to Trap Code, and go to Shine. And as you can see, this has already added a pretty awesome uh, color effect to the uh, Blast layer. But unfortunately, because I'm using the trial version of Trap Code Suite, it has also added a slight but noticeable wet X throughout the entire effect. So if you can afford to actually purchase the special effect from Trap Code, then go ahead and do that. It is quite expensive, but if you have uh, got, got the bucks, then go ahead and get the full effect. So you get rid of this wet X. Uh, and now go over here to the to the uh, special effect properties and let's go ahead and start tinkering around with the colors. Now I like to uh, choose electricity or electric because it sort of creates a blue glow which is kind of like the classic sort of uh, beam uh, effect but it's entirely up to you I mean you can do whatever you want I mean you've got fire which is the default uh, this Mars color it's not that great. Uh, USA. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. But uh, I'm going to keep it on electric for the time being. So I'm happy with uh, that effect there. Let's just uh, click outside the composition. So so that is what it will look like on the video. You, you will have the, uh, the wet X going through it if you're using the trial version. But hey, what can we do? OK. So we're done with this layer. So let's go and close that all down by clicking on the triangle there next to Blast. And let's go ahead and click on Blast 2 and make sure that that's selected. Um, also make sure that you click on the eye icon so it is showing. OK, so with the Blast 2 layer selected, what we're going to do now is start adding a lot of effects to this layer. Now, my computer only has 3 gigabytes of memory. It did have 4, but one of the uh, gigabytes uh, died on me. But uh, stick with me. It shouldn't take too long. Hopefully, you'll, you have a better computer than I do. So let's go ahead to Effect. Go down to... Gosh, where is it? Go down to Noise and Grain. And select Fractal Noise. And on Noise Type, you want to change it to Linear. Contrast, let's make contrast over 9,000. No, let's make it 900. And then let's go to brightness and make this negative 100. And then for overflow, you want to change it to wrap back. So we've got this crazy looking uh, effect here on Blast 2. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on your current time indicator. And let's drag this to the very first frame of the composition. Now let's go to Evolution Options in the Effects uh, window and let's click on the triangle next to Evolution Options and bring all these uh, properties here. Now let's click on Cycle Evolution and let's change the property to 5. Now let's click on the Stopwatch for Evolution which is up here. And now let's go ahead and drag this forward to the very last frame of the video. And let's change this parameter up here on evolution to 5. So now if we go to Blast 2, the layer, and click on the triangle here, you can see that we've created a uh, keyframe for the effects here, which is for the fractal noise. You can see that we've created uh, keyframes for the evolution uh, property. So if we drag this back to the very first frame, you can see down here that it's changing. And basically what this does is it animates the fractal noise 
So we're not we've not got like a static uh, that basically. We don't have this throughout the entire video. So it is actually being animated throughout the video, which you can see clearer when the energy ball gets bigger. Okay, so make sure you've uh, done that correctly, and we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so what we want to do now is add another effect. So let's go ahead and minimize fractal noise in our Blast 2 layer. Uh, and let's go ahead and minimize the fractal noise effect in the effect window here. Okay, so now go to Effect. Let's make sure that Blast 2 is selected. Go to Effect. Go to Blur and Sharpen. And then click on Radial Blur. Okay, so now we have these properties here for radial blur. So let's go ahead uh, with our current time indicator in the timeline and let's find the points uh, where we start to shoot out the energy. So I would say about here is when we start first is when I start thrusting my hands forward to shoot out this energy beam. So from about here we want to go ahead and create a new keyframe. So let's go ahead and click on the stopwatch for center. And let's leave it where it is for the time being. Let's change a uh, spin to zoom. And let's uh, put up the amount to about 150. Okay, so what we want to do is as we shoot this bad boy out, so let's say to about when it when the beam actually leaves the energy ball. So let's say about there. Let's relocate the center to just behind the actual circle. So you can see that the effect looks like it's shooting out. So from here to there, the center of the effect should relocate from the center of the circle to the very far left of the circle. Let's go ahead and render that real quick. Oh, it's rendering the entire thing, okay. Oh, I swear it slows down. So you can see the effect here is still sort of in the center and as I start to launch it towards the edge of the screen the center of the effect changes. It's actually looking pretty good. You can obviously uh, tinker around with the positioning of the center. So as you can see, this effect really adds energy to the uh, energy ball and the beam itself and gives uh, a sense of direction of where the energy is coming out of your hands to the audience. But now we need to add some color to it, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so to add color, let's first uh, minimize the radial blur effect in the effect window here. <clears throat> uh, let's go to Effect, go to Color Correction, and let's go to Hue and Saturation. Click that, and here we have the Hue and Saturation properties. Go and click Colorize. Uh, let's up the color saturation to about 50. And now all you need to do is just click on the color hue uh, property and just drag it left or right depending on the uh, color of your energy beam uh, until we get something that's very similar to uh, what we got here. So that's looking about right. It's a bit too green. Let's go ahead and go a little bit further. There we go. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, nice uh, uh, blue there. Okay, so the last effect that we're going to add to the Blast 2 layer is basically add a bit of dimension, a bit of 3D dimension to the actual effect. So let's go ahead and minimize the hue and saturation here. Uh, of course, Blast 2 should be selected. Go to Effect, go to Distort, and then you want to click on spherize. And basically what we want to do here is we're going to make sure that the center of the sphere is bang in the center of the uh, blast tube layer, the circle. So let's go ahead and click there. And then let's go ahead and expand the radius. So as you can see, a sort of like 3D dimension, like a bubble almost, is being created 
at the center point of the circle. So if I just quickly uh, turn this effect off, you can see sort of what it's doing. It's sort of adding a 3D uh, dimension. It's just basically making the uh, Blast 2 circle layer pop out, if you will. Uh, just makes the whole effect look a lot better. Sort of sells the effect a lot more to the audience, I, I think. Okay, so that's basically it for the actual uh, effects for the Blast and Blast 2 layers. So we've basically got uh, all the effects that we need for uh, those two layers, but now we're going to do uh, a few uh, things to the actual composition in order to just basically sell the effect even more to the audience and just make everything look a little bit better. Entirely up to you if you want to do this, but I would rec highly recommend it. So let's go ahead and minimize Blast 2. Uh, let's go to Layer, New Layer, Solid. Let's go ahead and make sure that the new solid is white and let's click on Make Comp Size. So now it's reduced it back to 1920 by 1080. And let's go ahead and hit OK. And let's rename this solid Flash. OK, so with the new Flash solid selected, you can either hit F4 or you can go down to the bottom left of the interface here and click on Expand or Collapse the Transfer Controls panel. So go ahead and click on this button now. This brings up the mode here. And what you want to do is you want to click on the drop down arrow next to Normal and select Color Dodge. Now you want to go to the very end of your timeline. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the opacity down to zero. And let's hit the stopwatch icon here so it creates a keyframe. And now what we want to do, we want to scroll backwards in the video to the point where we start shooting the beam out of the energy ball. So around, oh, we've gone too far back. Uh, so that's where the energy beam starts to come out. So let's go back one frame there. Okay, and let's also have the opacity here zero. So let's go ahead and click on the diamond icon here on opacity to create another keyframe. Okay, so that keyframe created, what we're going to do now is open up a tool called the Wiggler. So go to Window, go down to Wiggler and click on it. And what's happened now is that the uh, Wiggler window has appeared down here. But as you can see in our timeline, that we've been pushed out, so we can't actually see the other keyframe which we created earlier. Uh, we need to be able to see both keyframes in order to use the Wiggler. Uh, so let's go ahead and hold down Shift and select the other keyframe. So now both keyframes are selected, and the Apply button in the Wiggler tool has become clickable. But before we uh, click Apply, we're going to change a few settings here. So Apply to in Wiggler should be Temporal Graph, Noise Type should be Smooth, let's uh, ignore Dimensions for the time being, and Frequency is the number of times the magnitude will change per second, and Magnitude is the percentage of the opacity, in this case, that will change. So I want the opacity to change 20 times per second, and I don't want the opacity to go any higher than 20%. So now when I hit Apply, It'll create all these keyframes down here, and if I scrub, scrub through the video, you can see that the composition sort of flashes uh, kind of whitish uh, at different uh, random frequencies and magnitudes. So what this does is it basically adds a lot of power to the video and really sells the effect again to the audience. Okay, so now that we have all those keyframes created, let's go ahead to the project window here, click on your composition, and drag it down into the new composition window. And what this does is it basically puts all your layers from your previous composition into one layer in a new composition. Now, in this uh, composition here, the new composition that we just made, we're going to create a camera shake effect. Okay, everyone, before we continue, top tip, uh, I just realized that I didn't save my uh, project uh, earlier in the video. Uh, 
I'm really surprised that I didn't lose anything or that my computer crashed because it is quite old. So I do highly recommend that you save often and make sure you save your project even before you start actually doing any work. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead to Composition Window. Click on the triangle and I'll bring up Transform and Audio. Click on the triangle next to Transform and select the Position property. Now go to the very end of the video. You may have noticed that in my video I decided to end the video with me sort of walking towards the camera. I've decided that I actually want to trim that down so I end it right there just before I pull my hands away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the work area down to that length. Right click on the gray bar and trim comp to work area. So now I end the video there. Okay, so with position, let's go ahead and click on the stopwatch and create a new keyframe. And let's go back and do exactly the same thing that we did previously and find where the beam leaves the energy ball. So about there, so let's start there. And let's create another keyframe by clicking on the diamond shaped icon here. And now it's just basically the same thing with the wiggler tool. So let's select both keyframes. Let's leave that as is and let's leave the noise type as is, dimensions as is, and it's already set to 2020, which is fine. So let's go ahead and hit apply. So now we have all these keyframes, and as you can see, the screen shakes. So we have this sort of camera shake, and it just basically gives uh, the whole effect, the whole video, even more power, and sells the effect really well to the audience. The only problem is, is that we now have these small black bars appear on either side, of the video of the composition as the camera shakes. So we're going to go ahead and fix this now. Okay, so in order to fix the camera shake and get rid of those black bars, what we want to do is first minimize transform and make sure that energy blast is selected. Go to effect, click on stylize, and then go and click on motion tile. Now in the motion tile properties, you want to click on mirror edges and we want to set output width and output height to 125. And the reason why we're changing it to 125 is because in the Wiggler tool we set the frequency to 20 and we set the magnitude to 20. So as long as it's over 20, or in this case over 120, then we should be able to hide those black bars. So if I scrub through the video, you can see now that no black bars are appearing. Okay, so before we render the video, there's one more thing that we're going to do, and it's very simple. We're just going to click on Motion Blur on the composition, and also Global Motion Blur. And basically this enables motion blur on anything that moves in the video, and makes the whole effect very strong, and just adds more realism to the audience who's watching the video. So now that we're done, let's go ahead and render the video. So go to Composition, go to Add to Render Queue, and we want to go to Output Module, click on Lossless, and this window will uh, pop up and we want to change the format so I like using QuickTime so I'll go ahead and click QuickTime video outputs yep leave that as it is do not resize do not crop and I'll keep the audio output in there I'll hit OK and output 2 this is my QuickTime folder here so I'm gonna change this to Energy Blast Edits because I'm gonna edit this video in Adobe Premiere Click Save and hit Render. So that's it guys, you have uh, created your first Adobe After Effects Energy Blast special effect. Congratulations! Hi guys, thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope it really helped you out. If it did, please hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. And let me know what you thought of the tutorial in the comments section below. If you're interested in other Adobe After Effects videos and videos such as video game gameplay videos, do check out my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. Okay guys, thanks. Peace.